Ah, double hat. Ah, oh, lovely. Hello and welcome to Bushcraft Bullshit episode 10. I've done this episode 10 in about three different settings a bunch of times now and I've deleted them all because I wanted to focus on a proper theme for it. And the theme for today is what is bushcraft? I got inspired to do this because I got this comment on my duct tape boots bushcraft bullshit short version. So I got into a long talk with this um, viewer who were bashing my uh, takes and opinions on the duct tape crossing river thing. It's still shit. We got into a long talk and I asked him, so what do you think bushcraft is? Because they keep hashtagging bushcraft and survival in the same vein and coming up with this sort of bullshit. So I asked him, what do you think it is? And he said, bushcraft is about making shit work and surviving when you don't have the means to do so. Especially your proper equipment or modern equipment or any equipment. Well, not really. And I said to him, not really, we'll get to my reply, but that's survival. Survival is about making shit work, but you still have to have a solid base of knowledge and skills to actually put these survival skills like cover and uh, water and fire into practice. It's not just about making shit work, it's about knowing what you're doing as well. But survival is also working with what you have and making the best of it. My reply to him was, no, actually survival is about making shit work. Uh, the basics, water, shelter, fire and bushcraft is much more about learning, gathering, using natural materials and resources in your surroundings, practicing and trying to thrive instead of just survive. Bushcraft is a blend between craftsmanship and survival skills, so on and so forth. I still stand by that take. I did not have this book with me when I wrote this comment, but let's see what the Nordic definition of bushcraft is. This uh, book is from Jesper Hill called Bushcraft in the North, and it comes in an English version too. And it's just a lot of great skills uh, rooted in the basics of, you know, bushcraft. The five C's. Cover, combustion, cutting, containers and cordage. The five C's of bushcraft. And let's see what he writes. Well, a bushcraft. What is bushcraft? Bushcraft is outdoor life in its most simple form, but not survival, even though it's often connected. There are wilderness skills that will travel over from one theme to another, but what we call bushcraft or outdoor wilderness skills is about being in nature, thriving in nature, enjoying nature and understanding it. So bushcraft is more hobby based and can indeed be added to survival and they complement each other very well. But bushcraft is kind of a modern take on survival which carries over to outdoor life such as camping and hiking and all that. But it's still basically rooted in the same elements like uh, water, fire, shelter and the five C's, you know. So to the guy who said it's just about making shit work, survival is about the basics and making shit work with what you have. But bushcraft is so much more. It's much more of a hobby based angle to approach the outdoor life. And it is very much skill based, especially within the five C's. And that can supplement your creativity and supplement how you attack the basics of survival skills. They complement each other very well, but just to say it's about making shit work and then justifying it with making boots out of duct tape and crossing a river. That's not how it works. And it's not about just making shit work. It's about how you approach nature and what skills you learn in nature. And that can supplement survival skills. I just wanted to start on that note. Uh, and as we go forward to look at these pieces of absolute, you know, canine fecal matter. And let's keep in mind going forward to watch these videos I have picked that these trash crafters actually categorize these things as bushcraft skills and survival skills. And after I just read this definition, it's kind of gross that they call it that, not kind of. It's so gross. But after we watch these videos, we're going to take a look at some of the things they present in these videos. And let's try to make it a bit more bushcrafty. Let's see if there is an equivalent to a more natural material or approach we can take from these videos. Let us start. Finding a Coke can, but there's no tab to open it. For some reason, he lights it for one second with a lighter. He sharpens the stick and then he proceeds to, you know, go in circles around the can with no tab. And apparently, I don't know why, I guess it's something about pressure, pressure from the outside, pressure from the vibrations on the inside, building up carbon dioxide and 
and that weak point just bursting. I guess it's that. I've never seen this before. I think it's um, there's so many better ways to do it. And we're going to tackle that little uh, petite uh, problem later. Easy way to open soda is the title and he has tagged it survival bushcraft experiment life hacks. Survival, a bunch of stuff can fit under the survival term. Oh man, it's stretching it. Bushcraft, definitely not. Okay, next video he finds some eyeball candy and for some reason they're covered in plastic but he washes them anyway and he opens them halfway up. Places them on a stump, puts sticks in it, and then he's going to use it as his fire source. It is just... <laughs> oh, God. We have strayed so far from what is actual, you know, even being close to outdoor skills. And it is scary that 595 people gave this a thumbs up. It probably has... Over 10,000 views and uh, oh good lord. You know what, he may be picking up eyeballs but he has the eyes on the wrong prize entirely when it comes to outdoor skills. Holy moly. I don't know what's more monstrous, these Frankenstein eyes he's picking up or that he actually has the audacity to call this a skill. Don't get me wrong, creativity is your absolute biggest survival tool. But man, you gotta you gotta learn some base stuff, and this ain't it. Okay, he's pulling out a latex glove, hopefully not with powder in it. He's picking up water and pouring it into his metal cup. And that's it, I guess. <sighs> and again with the survival bushcraft camping. Camping, yeah, alright. Survival? Mm. Definitely not bushcraft, but why not just Use the metal cup you have to scoop up the water. Yeah, okay, the the latex glove can act as a, you know, transport vessel. You can tie it. But in this situation where you're just getting water from the nearest water source, it has no merit or meaning whatsoever. You know what? I know a piece of latex where you should have ended up. That was a bit harsh, but you shouldn't have you shouldn't have been born. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna make some fire starters, some kind of Vaseline, petroleum, petroleum jelly, heating it up and using cotton to soak in the jelly or wax and putting it into waterproof containers. Yeah, and um, then he's closing up with a hot knife. Uh, Speaking of hot knife, this project he's just done looks like hot shit. Uh, very poorly executed, to be honest. But the whole uh, cotton and Vaseline trick, very good. Especially when you are trying to teach children how, you know, the basic mechanics of starting a fire works with a fire steel. This is very useful. The uh, very uh, the large surface area of the uh, cotton will soak up the petroleum jelly. Petroleum jelly will help sustain the flame so the cotton burns longer. So very good hack and tip to use to practice uh, fire steel and fire starting with uh, beginners or kids. And why the straws? Well, to keep it watertight in whatever pouch or bag you're keeping it in. Survival? Yeah, kind of. Prepping? Bushcraft? Definitely not not natural materials or anything like that, but it is a useful thing to know that petroleum can prolong a flame and that cotton takes the spark very well. So this one definitely has merits and we're going to take a look at this uh, a bit later on. And by the magic of continuity, I have uh, received a t-shirt in the mail and had to cut the video last night a bit short because uh, Chatty McChat Dads decided to mow his lawn at 7 p.m. when I was filming and it was a bit too loud for me. So here we are again, and we're going to tackle two things of the shit we just saw. We're going to tackle a more natural approach to the Vaseline and cotton, and we are going to tackle opening a can. That's kind of more just for fun because I think it's stupid. Let's get the stupid shit out of the way first. Let's open a can, and this is just a, uh, this is just a piece of fat wood, and let's just use that. Now he sharpened his stick, so... 
Let's just do that as well. And he did the whole circular thing, probably creating a lot of pressure and a lot of bubbles. I have something a bit different. Now he did this bullshit and uh, I don't get it. I think it's stupid, it's not survival, not bushcraft, not by a long shot. Bushcraft is not just about making shit work. It's about how you are in nature and it's grounded in understanding, learning about nature, AKA skills. Uh, so what is the point of the tab on the aluminum can? Well, it's to press down on a vulnerable point on the can. And you don't need to do all that kind of magical Merlin bullshit. You just have to fucking puncture it. You just have to puncture it. Just bushcraft. <coughs> Sorry. Bushcraft. That was better. Next one. Let's try something that maybe parallels the uh, Vaseline cotton trick, but with natural materials. So we maybe can actually call it bushcraft. Oh yeah, and before we go any further, I made a fun kind of different ad for knives. So thank you, Emil Handmade Knives, for supplying me with some great tools. Here's a fun ad. Okay. Can I, can I put it in this? So it's very nice to meet you, A.B. Bushcraft. So what do you look for? In Is that the first question? Have we, have we started? Two seconds. Honey, can you bring me a cup of tea? Okay. So what do you look for in a knife when buying a new one? Well, first of all, I look for a nice aesthetic. I like a nice look. I also look for if the interest matches mine, so. But what I really just look for is, are we compatible? <laughs> Honestly, it, it sounds like you're looking for a girlfriend or, or something to that effect, not a knife. Oh, thanks, honey. You can't be serious. Are you having a relationship with a piece of steel and wood? You're a sick man. Get the fuck out of my house. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that ad because I did enjoy making it. Okay, let's get after it. We're going to use fat wood and uh, spruce resin. Let's do it. So the cotton slash the fibrous material will be replaced by the shavings of the fat wood and the Vaseline will be replaced by melted and burning resin. And this resin will also sustain the burn time for quite a few minutes, actually. What I usually do with fat wood is scrape a lot of fibrous material off that is filled with resin. And also afterwards, I can add some thicker shavings. I have a rule when I'm teaching children and adults when it comes to materials. If you think you have enough, double it. With my current uh, skill level and practice, I think I would have enough to actually get uh, bigger shavings going and some small sticks with the resin. So I'm going to double it. Okay, there we go. And then we can just add the, well, we can just add our substitute for the petroleum jelly, the Vaseline. And that is in this case, our resin. And I hope you can see it. The resin has melted well into the, the shavings of the fat wood and it has already burned a lot longer. So this you can absolutely just find on your travels in the woods or you can prep it from home like I did. But this is a more natural and honestly a more fun and a bit longer process. Vaseline and cotton, absolutely good for, you know, the, um, the kids when they have to learn a fire steel or how to prep from home uh, for a fire with kind of a more fun material than newspaper and, you know, Sippo fluid. A bit more skill, especially with the fire steel, but the outcome and level of enjoyment and success they will get out of this process, I think is a bit more heightened than the Vaseline trick. But it's very enjoyable. And as you can see, it's still burning. What's it been since I've moved it all around? About four minutes. And that was a relatively small pile of resin I used and a relatively small pile of fat wood. What to take away from this BBC? All that bullshit you see, it's getting worse. A lot more pages are doing it. 
they're just stamping it survival and bushcraft and it's getting more and more ridiculous let's focus on a more natural way to do it through the bushcraft mentality of being outdoor in nature understanding it using skills perpetuating the five c's and you know adding it to the whole survival mentality of having base knowledge and then working from there you can call a lot of stuff outdoor camping bushcraft survival but i think there are fundamental pillars that you build on if you just start with lighting pringles on fire man in my opinion if your base is to start with pringle cans setting chips on fire using tin foil to strain your tea lighting candy monster eyes on fire to boil your water you know what put a lid on that pringles can lube it up take 10 paces back so you have a big old running start jump as high as you can bare assed onto that lubed up pringles can you know get learned let me know what you think to my kind of more natural alternative to the vaseline i'm not knocking the vaseline way there's just a lot of different ways to do it and it's important to be open-minded but not not so open-minded that you uh, set fire to pringles ending note there are pretty clear definitions on what survival and bushcraft have their roots in what base skills and knowledge that goes into it so let's try to have a realistic baseline yeah that was it from the b B C episode 10 and this one I'm feeling pretty confident about. Also, let me know what do you think of this? I don't know if this is going to be a, you know, sustainable merch line, but I just wanted to have one for myself just yet. I had to change the tagline from nipples to cans. <laughs> so I wouldn't get, you know, canceled. <laughs> in regards to fire lighting, when in doubt, double it and uh as a, you know, baseline, if the cans are showing, it's not a hack worth knowing. See you later.